Um. So, the next video we're getting ready to, and if you're wondering why I'm still in the same clothes, because it's because of, like I record multiple reaction videos in the, in one stream, which I'm pretty sure you figured out. And then I like have them scheduled to come out days later, like like one day after the next day after the next day after the next. Eventually, I'll get to the point where like I'll have one day coming out. Or one video coming out every day for like the next 10 years. Five years, two years. I'll get to that point eventually. <laughs> anyway, the next video we're getting ready to watch is um it makes me wonder. Well, the first thing that comes to mind when I think about it is like so this might be why well, this might be a, this is not just why my but like this could be one of the reasons why a lot of streamers and YouTubers and Twitch and blah 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 blah. A lot of them don't this is like one of the one of the minuscule reasons i guess mm, i mean i say minuscule because this, this video could turn out to be more than i thought anyway it is a good reason let's go with that it's a good reason why uh, a lot of twitch streamers even or, or youtubers or even people who have money and people who have money in general it's a good reason why they don't like even if they're not in, in social media and having money, because obviously there's other reasons why like Twitch streamers and YouTubers would hide their actual cash flow because they want to be more relatable. And anyway, uh, anyway, anyway, I'm, I'm getting off tangent. Uh, it's a good reason to not show money online. I'll say that because the, the video is actually titled why you should never talk about money online. <laughs> it's by the YouTube channel Kita TV. So as always, link to the channel, link to the, to, link to the video will, will be in the description below. And real quick, if you if you you know if you pay attention, if you if you know you're a viewer that pay that pays attention to detail, you'll notice the painting on the back of my wall. And if you, if you know, you know. Anyway, this is by Kita TV. This is by Kita TV, the YouTube channel. So link to the channel, link to the video will both be in the description below. Be sure to check it out. Uh, let's get it. Avoid walking in a bad neighborhood while fl it's common sense to avoid walking in a bad neighborhood while flaunting expensive jewelry, leaving valuables on your car seat, or pulling out a bunch of cash in public. These are just simple things we all do to lessen the risk of being robbed. But in 2024, people have decided to ignore this common sense and instead open themselves up to a much wider audience of opportunists. I'm, I'm of course talking about social media. There are many factors that play into this, but the biggest one is flexing wealth. If you were wealthy in the years before social media, there was an inherent protection of crimes requiring a spur of the moment decision, or someone who had an incredible level of access to your life. I actually didn't know he was gonna, going to touch on like social media and wealth. With social media though, People seem not only happy, but willing to present themselves as that target and give that access to the world entirely for free, just to flex. I guess, yeah, I guess there are some people on social, in social media that do that, but it, I guess th there's also a lot of, you know, streamers and YouTubers that try to hide that shit for certain reasons. You know, it's not, but they hide some of some of them hide it because because of one reason and some of them hide it or just don't mention it because it's not it's, it's, it's nothing it's nothing that they're actually like you know worried about not worried about but like ashamed of having or it's not it's nothing that's like it's just like a daily part of their lives or whatever they, it's, they, don't, they don't try to hide it it's just there and they just don't like, they just don't you know really put it in people's faces anyway 
If you ever want to achieve financial freedom, oh my then God. you need to stop exchanging time for money. Hey, and instead, invest into assets that generate a passive income irrespective of the world marketplace. In the first example, let's look at Kieran Hamilton, a Manchester-based and self-titled finance guru. Kieran posts a typical lifestyle of the finance influencer online, complete with millions of dollars in luxury goods like clothing, watches, cars, and property, but also a lifestyle of travel and general opulence. Embedded in these posts are the links to explain this lifestyle and how Kieran lives it. Damn, even in his image, in his little icon there, he's got the whole triangle square thing going. All right, bro, do your thing. He claims he can teach you how to become as wealthy as he is using the typical methods, Forex trading, YouTube automation, collectibles trading, property investment, and more. Now, whether he can do this or if he's earned money from it is not the point of this video. He's among thousands of Finfluencer accounts on social media that make the same promises. And usually they make their wealth from selling this fake luxury lifestyle. Finfluencer? Like financial, financial influencer? Finfluencer. Promises. And usually they make their wealth from selling this fake luxury lifestyle to gullible people as opposed to making money doing the things that they claim. Because realistically, if you were this finance guru who could turn hundreds into thousands into millions, you wouldn't need to tell anybody else, you just do it. And then if you really wanted to help people, you'd just give to charities. Charging people money to tell them how to make money. Well, I would like, personally, I would like to think that there are, are people out there who are willing to be like, hey, if you're trying to escape the nine to five grind, Here's some ways to actually make money and so you don't have to worry to make enough money so you don't have to worry about money for the rest of your life. I would like to think that there would be a very few selective people out there that actually want to help gen genuinely want to help you and give you some actual good advice, some actual, you know, saying uh some actual shit, some some to that you, some to actually guide you down that path. But like it's the it's the internet. So 99.8 99.98 percent of the people are gonna be fake. It's a little bit contradictory if you say that's why you do it in the first place. Either way, however he got the money or whether he has as much as he claims, posting about it all on social media is a double-edged sword, or should I say a double-edged machete oh, in shit. Kieran's case. Wait, what happened? He woke up one night to the sound of smashing downstairs thinking it was his French Bulldogs fighting as usual. Then he heard footsteps on the staircase of his new home. Within minutes, Kieran was face to face with two machete-wielding intruders. They told him exactly what they wanted, and those were the things he was bragging about on social media, That's such as watches, cash, laptops, and more. After a few punches and a bit of stabbing, they took what they could and left the house. Unfortunately, what they could get at the time was one of his dogs, but at least as a happy ending to this story, he did get the dog back about a year later. Now, obviously, Kieran was targeted solely because of his social media posts, posts he made specifically for attention, and attention is exactly what he got, though not in the way he would have liked in this case. Since then, he posts on social media less, but when it's part of your business model to sell the product of promised wealth to your audience, it's probably kind of hard to avoid. Oh, and now let's look at an example that shows yikes on strikes. Oh man, like, yeah, nah, like that. I, I, uh, oof. yeah, you it, you definitely want to, you know what I'm saying, hide your wealth because of that shit, especially if people find out where you live and you like you get doxxed without you know the public knowing you were doxxed, then like, yeah, bro, you you might. It's, a, it's another good reason to uh, hide your wealth while uh, while making videos online instead of flexing it. That's definitely like number one reason, right? <laughs> to be honest. You don't have to be some crypto influencer or finance guru. You can be a businessman who just so happens to associate with influencers or just individuals who like to post and brag on social media. So let's go back to March of 2023. A successful businessman from Vietnam by the name of Tran Dinh booked an emergency flight out of Sydney, a flight that he considered to be life or death. So what was it that scared Mr. Din? Well, luckily for him, 
He had advanced warning about a group of criminals that were out to rob him of his vast hoard of cryptocurrency. I say lucky for him, mm. but this warning came at a hefty cost for his business partner, Peter Vuong. No, oh, shit, they went after someone he knew. Of being ambushed outside his girlfriend's house, leaving him with a broken eye socket. Unfortunately, this warning wasn't taken as seriously as it should have been, as eight days after that initial incident, Peter woke up to the sounds of smashing glass and quickly found himself at the mercy of six armed men. Peter's influencer girlfriend, who frequently posted lavish pictures of their multi-millionaire lifestyle, watched as he was dragged away in the dead of night, wondering if she'd ever see him again. The very next day, Trandin received- Of course she posted all that shit, that's what a lot of modern women like to do. I saw I low-key feel sorry for that type of guy. I mean, wasn't there a rapper who people like that was that was killed a, ra a rapper that was killed in like a um in a robbery while he was at a restaurant with his girl but she was posting you know his location and everything like that wasn't there someone like that i, I i'm pretty sure, I, I know there was i i just can't i'm trying to remember if it was a rapper or not i think it was a rapper was it an actor no i'm pretty sure it was a rapper it was definitely a rapper i just don't remember their name because I've been in, in a fucking rabbit hole for, not a rabbit hole, but I've been like away from a lot of current rap. I only listen to like if a select few of people, so I'm not aware of the entire uh, artist out there. But the, I know there was a rapper and their, the, his girlfriend was, po was constantly posting, you know, videos on online showing where he was showing or showing where they were you know like kind of like how this 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 guy's girl was doing how uh the guy on screen his girl was doing and people just you know found their location and just like yeah so you gotta be careful with women like that too you gotta be you have to be careful with who you keep around you your circle of friends if someone's always wanting to take to take pictures and post them online as a flex, as a type of flex, then you don't need them in your circle, in my opinion. Received communication from the kidnappers, demanding five million dollars, making it clear they had his associate and that they intended to turn his whole body into many smaller pieces if the ransom was left unpaid. Not just that. But they sent pictures of Trandin and his wife's photo identification along with the ransom, directly threatening that if he didn't pay this ransom, not only would his partner turn into a jigsaw, it would be their turn next. Clearly, the kidnappers had prepared to target these high net worth individuals. This wasn't a random crime of chance. There was no spur of the moment attack on someone who'd flashed a wad of cash, but a premeditated crime with substantial planning and study. Which again, obviously... I don't condone that shit. I don't, I don't condone that shit. I don't fuck with that shit. I, I'm sorry this guy had to, had to go through that. But off note, his partner turned into a jigsaw. It w is, is this a bar? Get the five mil ready. Your girl is a machete. Uh, or your girl is, is a machine. Oh, never mind. I was thinking machete for some reason. Your girl is a machine. Get the five mil ready. Redeem. Never mind. No bar is there. Attack on and study. So Again, sorry, it's just my mind thinks in not strange ways. Which again, obviously comes from not social sorry. media sorry? and seeing the wealth and opulence that these individuals are living with. So as for what happened, well, Mr. Din did what I'm sure most people would do. He hopped on a flight and got the fuck out of there. Mm. Meanwhile, though, his unlucky associate was tied to a bed in a nearby home that had been outfitted to look like something out of a spy movie, some kind of CIA safe house and spent five days blindfolded having his teeth pulled out with pliers. So he didn't even try to help his friend? He left? You didn't even try to help your friend by sending them money and just like hoping they let him go? You just dipped out? Oh shit, man. Luckily after those five days, the Australian police raided the house and saved him. Thankfully, Arrests were made and discoveries presented in court that reveal a deep plan of bribing employees to give up identification of the men, which was then used to set up this abduction. Maybe that's why he left. Like, he, uh, informed the police what's going on. 
And then police probably said, hey, you should probably like get the fuck out. We'll handle everything from here. Maybe that maybe that's what happened. Okay. In that case, if that's if that's what happened, then yeah, yeah. It's a good thing he didn't send the money. But like so he, so he may have actually tried to help his friend by, you know, fleeing or or after fleeing after telling the police. I thought I thought the man just left his friend to die. Now, I'm obviously not saying that these men deserved what happened to them or any of the people in this video deserve what happens to them. Right. That isn't the point I'm trying to make. Mm. What I am saying is that we're living in a new time altogether. Mm. If you're going to make money, generate status or attention by posting online, flaunting your wealthy lifestyle, you will undoubtedly find that some of that attention is going to be bad. There are people around the world who are struggling and they see you as a piñata to be hit with a stick until the candy falls out. So the answer, if you are lucky enough to be wealthy, is to stop flexing it online. Obviously in an ideal world, you wouldn't be the victim of crimes, but we all lock our doors at night for specifically this reason, because the ideal world doesn't exist. So you do need to take precautions. For Peter Wong, he was lucky that it ended with a few teeth removed and the plan required him to be kept alive. Obviously, some people are not so lucky, and some of them are going to be in this video a little bit later. No, oh, all right. But the difference between Peter Wong's situation and some others is a level of professionalism. The people who abducted him may have had a plan, but it wasn't a very good one, and they didn't execute it all too well. So let's examine the difference between a professional operation and an amateur one. We'll also keep it on theme with wealthy cryptocurrency businessmen. Okay. In 2024, this is a real thing that's been happening. Right. For many years, let's imagine you were kidnapped. Ran <laughs> Bro, we're only five months into 2024. Sums like the case of Tran and Peter were the norm. They'd grab somebody, then ask a rich person to pay money for their return. And the reason this didn't work out most of the time is because bank transfers are usually heavily scrutinized when it comes to large sums of cash and are controlled by centralized entities that can freeze funds, redirect them, or return assets once they're on the move. This whole process can take days and it can take minutes to undo. But obviously in 2024 and a few years past, cryptocurrency exists and people can be walking around with millions of dollars in their pocket. A simple face scan, a fingerprint on the mobile phone, and there could be sat generational wealth. That wealth can be transferred within seconds anywhere on the globe with zero scrutiny and almost no way to see it returned. So obviously this adds an additional level of risk to flaunting wealth online, especially in the world of cryptocurrency. If you have a Twitter account where you post about the millions you make and then people notice you in public, it's not just a watch that they're going to be snatching off your wrist. If they can get access to your phone, they could literally empty what amounts to your life savings within mm. minutes. God damn. One simple example of this are reports of business executives being lured to fake meetings. They believe they're there for a nice meal, maybe a bottle of expensive wine and conversations about potential partnerships. But in reality, they're taken to a dark room, forced to open their phone and send millions of dollars in assets. And if they're lucky, released without harm. This is an example that shows the difference between professionals and amateurs. Mm. An amateur might come into your house with a machete looking for a few watches or a few thousand dollars in loose cash because they see you post on Instagram. A professional, they're going straight for the cryptocurrency accounts in your mobile phone. This is how- 420 Blaze. Instagram. A professional- 420 Blaze. No, back, back to serious talk. They're going straight for the cryptocurrency accounts in your mobile phone. This has happened countless times and really illustrates the dangers of being a public figure with a high net worth in 2024, especially in that world of cryptocurrency. So what about when we combine three things? What about when we have cryptocurrency, an influencer flaunting his wealth online, and a personal vendetta? I'm sure that's a winning combination that will turn out just fine in the end. Also, this is why there's a lot of billionaires that just don't show the, don't flex their wealth. They just walk around. They walk around without security. There's a lot of multimillionaires out there and a lot of billion and some billionaires out there that walk around without security just in, in public. But they, it's because they can, they can do that because they don't flex their wealth. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> like you can walk past a multimillionaire on, on the street and not know he's a multimillionaire because they, you haven't seen them on Instagram showing off their bins or whatever or bugatti or, or bugatti whatever you know what i'm saying and, so, and they can just walk around like without without security because you know they don't need it anyway right 
Right. In the case of Aiden Platursky, right. it all happened as you would expect. The 22-year-old Aiden decided to share his years of wisdom and genius-level investing talent with the world. And somehow, this guy managed to convince hundreds of middle-class and up adults to part way with anywhere from tens of thousands to millions of dollars. Aiden assured them all the money would grow quickly because... Was he a scammer? What's what people named Aiden at one point being scammers? <clears throat> Aiden Roth. <clears throat> he was, as his social media would show, the self-proclaimed crypto king. With this pitch, Aiden managed to raise in the ballpark of $40 million, all on the premise that he could simply make money multiply and had experience doing so. Which again raises the question, why would he need other people's money if he could do this when he'd just be a billionaire in the first place? But obviously, that's a common sense reason to explain it. Unfortunately, when it comes to- I get that, like why you need other people's money when you can really be a billionaire in the first place? If you are that billionaire in the first place, why not, why not just give that information out for free? Greed, people often miss the obvious and see the fanciful because that's what they want. So Aiden was allegedly pooling the investor funds into his business account on a Belize-based cryptocurrency exchange and using that fund to make high profitable trades. But according to reports, no accounts in the name of Aiden or his business were registered to that exchange. Instead, he was allegedly using the investor funds to live out a high-flying life of a multimillionaire mm. while refusing requests to return money to those who handed it over. Aiden was paying $40,000 a month to live in mansions, buying Lamborghinis, flying in private jets, and wearing watches valued at close to a million dollars, all the while posting this lifestyle on social media. Unfortunately for Aiden, when you spend money that isn't yours and generate no returns, That's you build up. up a deficit that is often referred to as a Ponzi scheme. Mm. So eventually he was forced to declare bankruptcy, informing the many investors that their money was not only no longer growing, but no longer existed. Well, it's good that he was, you know what I'm saying, eventually outed, but like, it's fucked up that he took these, pe took these people's money and, you know, just, just for a flexing, just, a, just, a, just to flex a lifestyle. But at the same time, like these, these guys really put their trust in him. So and this guy was like how 20 something years old. They really decided to trust this man like that. without doing like any any actual background checks or anything like that on them like i want how service level did they go how deep did they go when it came to that before they before sending this guy his, his uh before sending this guy their money damn so i so yeah i can't help but feel sorry for like the, his, his victims but like fuck this aiden guy or oh, aiden Plat platursky guy <laughs> Why it no longer existed was mostly down to bankruptcy records showing that nearly $16 million of the 40 was spent by Aiden while he flew around the world on private jets and lived like a true king. Meanwhile, allegedly making zero attempt to trade a single dollar of the 40 million he raised from the investors. So lawsuits were filed and investigations were launched, but obviously some people decided to take it upon themselves to try and retrieve the funds that they considered stolen. Oh shit. After all, if it was in cryptocurrency, they could probably just take it out of his hands. At first they made threats, and second, a group of men abducted Aiden. They oh beat shit. Him severely, and then forced him to record an apology video. I'm sorry. I really am. I didn't want to or mean to ruin anybody's life which was later edited and sent to news outlets. This video would, of course, not be admissible as any form of evidence in any- Well, I mean, again, he deserved that. But shit, bro, you- Oof, yeah, you really shouldn't have done what you did. But you deserve that shit. In any case of the missing $40 million, and Aiden was clearly, visibly, under duress, making his statements impossible to take as truth. But obviously, the people who abducted him felt that this was important. They were, after all, risking years in prison to beat a confession out of Aiden, as well as hoping to recover some of the missing funds during said beating. So fast forward to the future. As of now, the money hasn't been recovered. Of course Aiden's not. still posting on social media, what? claiming now to be a quote, part-time pimp, streaming to kick.com and advertising for people to quote, make money with him. <sighs> How is he still allowed back online, bro? Hopefully, like, people have 
people hopefully some people know of his past and it's like bro like with with with, with what you did i don't know if i can fuck with you like that but there are gonna be people who fuck with some individuals because they have a shady past so Clearly, being abducted and beaten didn't teach him the full lesson, but his recent posts are flaunting much less wealth, so maybe part of a lesson. Now I'm gonna move on to the last example I'll give you. Of this. Okay, that's, that's not the that's not the rock. I thought that was the rock for a hot second. <laughs> and it's a little bit grisly because the image was blurred. Who's this guy? On July 19th, 2023, Fernando Perez Algaba disappeared without a trace. Mm. Fernando was a self-made oh, cryptocurrency influencer from Argentina with a net worth allegedly in the high millions. Mm. Fernando traveled the world, spending time in places like Barcelona and Miami, but it was during a week-long stay in Buenos Aires that he went missing. Mm. Traveling alone, it wasn't until he didn't turn in the keys for his rental property that anyone raised the alarm that something might have happened. It didn't take long for somebody to find Fernando, or at least part of him. Some local kids were playing football when they found a suitcase, with a few pieces of Fernando inside. What After the fuck? After police searched the area, they found the rest. The autopsy revealed he had been shot three times prior to what they called a professional job, cleanly turning the crypto influencer into smaller pieces. What the fuck? According to reports, Fernando wasn't just known for flaunting his wealth to his 900,000 and growing Instagram followers. He was also known by those close to him as having an issue with gambling, being in debt to the government for unpaid taxes, what the and fuck? taking loans from some less savory elements of society. Hey, yo, what? Police recovered multiple messages from Fernando's phone, where individuals were accusing him of owing substantial sums of money to- I have a poison with you that I hate you. Wait. You betrayed me and you caught me. Phone, I have a poison with where you. Where individuals- I have a poison with you that I hate you. That, that sense I don't understand. I have a poison with you that I hate you. Bulls were accusing him of owing substantial sums of money to them and their family members. Once I'm not hate I'm not threatening you. I'm telling you that I'm going to rip off your head. The money is mine and you don't play with me. I was I'm guessing English was not their first language. Were accusing him of owing substantial sums of money to them and their family members. One such message ominously said we will see each other face to face. Mm. So while Fernando likely did much more behind the scenes that contributed to the result, I'm sure flexing and flaunting on social media while owing money privately didn't go down well with the people who were waiting to be paid. So these are just a few examples of people deciding to not only ignore the common sense of keeping a low profile, but they made it their entire- Like when, when it comes to like being killed for it, that's like, you don't- I wouldn't wish something like that on my, my on my my worst enemy, but like that's kind of that's that's more than fucked up. That that's that that's not deserved. Like death for over money, in my opinion, that's not really deserved. But some people are like that serious about that shit, so it's like damn. I lifestyle to post about where they were, what they were doing, and specifically what they have. While many people do this in a fake it until you make it style to lie to others and make it feel like they're living some lavish crazy lifestyle that they're really not, to maybe enrich themselves from gullible followers, they end up making themselves a target either way, whether it's real or not. And considering the rise of cryptocurrency, we've also seen a rise of kidnappings of wealthy individuals who walk away with an empty crypto wallet, like having their bank account broken into, but without any of the difficulty or safeguards. In an ideal world, none of these things would happen, even if you were to show off what you had to those who didn't, but this should serve as a warning that doing so, not in an ideal world, is a stupid idea. Mm. Thanks for watching. It's common sense. Damn, man. Damn. That, yeah, yeah. Those are definitely better, better reasons to hide your money than what I was originally uh talking about in the beginning of this of the of this video on how on why certain like streamers and influencers and youtubers hide their money um but yeah those are definitely better reasons to hide your hide your, hide your shit hide your money but um be, this is this, this again this was by the youtube channel kita kita tv great video uh this was why you should never talk about money online as always, links to the video and link to the channel will both be in the description below, so be sure to check them out. But, uh, yeah. Yeah.
anyway that's it for this video so as always don't forget to do those three things i like to ask you to do and like comment and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell for more videos yeah and you know what it is after that in case i don't see you good morning good afternoon good evening and good night peace much love to you